Good afternoon. All right, this is a special occasion that we are here. I am Rodney Chamberlain, superintendent of the Anderson Parks Department, and um, Mr. Warner called me and a couple other guys to make this happen for Johnny Wilson. If it was not for Mr. James Warner, to my right, honoring this great man, Johnny Wilson, for all the things that he has done in this community, especially putting that basketball up. You know, one thing I have to say about, uh, I, I, I would call him Coach Wilson, uh, but I had some great opportunities uh, as a basketball official. See, he, don't, he never liked the guys in the striking shirt. He won't admit that. No, he'll admit that. He did not like the guys in the striking shirt. And I'm probably the one that he did not like, but that's all right. But we are great friends today, and now we get out on that golf course and hit that ball a long way. But uh, it's a great honor for me to be the MC uh, for this special occasion uh, to honor Jumping Johnny Wilson. We're calling this a family affair because we are all family. This is a community that has come together uh, to strive for a better, the betterment for our kids, the betterment for our community, the betterment for our seniors. And this is a great opportunity to be here. So at this time, we will have a welcome, Mr. Brad Milliman. Brad? I'm just glad, and I know Mr. Thompson is glad to host this event to honor Jumpin' Johnny. He was excited to get the statue recently dedicated last May uh, in honor of Johnny and all that he's done here at Anderson High School. Um, so again, we're excited for this event and on behalf of Anderson Community Schools and Anderson High School and Mr. Davis here, the principal at Anderson, we want to welcome you here and we're excited to um, have this program here to honor uh, this great man. So I will let the program continue. Thank you. At this time, we'd like to bring to you our mayor of the city of Anderson, Mr. Mayor Tom Broderick, Jr. Thank you, Rodney. Good afternoon, everyone. How are we doing today? All right. I'll tell you, 2016 has been quite a year, hasn't it? And I'm not talking about the heat. I'm talking about two great teams here in Madison County who brought basketball back to the community. Our good friends at Liberty Christian and Lapel High School have made Madison County and the city of Anderson proud, and we thank all of you so very much for what you've done. You know, it was only a few weeks ago that I had the ex uh, extreme privilege to be able to stand outside uh, with so many other folks in the community and, and pay honor to an individual who has given so much to our community over the last several years. And it was a great moment that we were able to see the unveiling of a statue that will stand for the rest of eternity that represents the best of men and women when it comes to taking care of communities. Jumping Johnny Wilson, it's important to understand that he didn't get a statue simply because he was a great basketball player at Anderson High School or that he happened to be on a team who won a state champion or that he was a Mr. Basketball, or went on to play at AU, and to coach, and to go on with the Harlem Globetrotters. We honor Johnny because of the man that he is, and that that was a beginning for him. And he, from that beginning, he learned, and he knew, and he gave back. He gave back by loving and taking care of his family and children, by caring for his community, and he continues to do this to this day. And as so many folks at that event indicated, John is a very humble person, and yet he is willing to come time and time again to let us to be able to honor that humility and that kindness and that compassion and that character that he displays. And for all of you young folks who have just begun the journey at Liberty Christian and at LaPel High School, I hope that you will work hard to follow in the footsteps of Johnny and realize that all that you have done in coming together as a team and all that you have done in working with your coaches 
to come forward and bring out the best in you, that you continue that into the future and follow in John's footsteps. That will truly make today a great memorial. Thank you. At this time, we will have the national anthem done by our own Mr. Carl Erskine with this harmonica. If everyone can stand, please. I don't feel like the anthem right now, John. Huh? Okay, hey, please join me. All right, thank you. We have some speakers that want to speak on John's behalf um, and just say some great things that they know about Johnny Wilson. Some are their, his son, his friends, his relatives, and just people in the community, and his daughters. They would just like to say a few words about this great man that we have before us. Our first speaker is John E. Wilson, the son of the great jumping Johnny Wilson. All right. Amen. Mr. Chamberlain, I uh, often wonder why I yelled at referees so much when I was coaching him. You let me know that it's obvious that he, uh, he taught me well. But, uh, what, what I'm going to say, and I'm going to be brief, one, I really appreciate uh, what the city of Anderson has done in, in uh, recognizing my dad and, and some of the things that he's accomplished and some of the things that he's done coming back home. Uh, you know, you have a lot of NBA stars, a lot of professional athletes that go away and do well. And, you know, the, the great ones are the ones that, that come back home and, and do for the community so unselfishly, and, and he's, he's obviously done that. Uh, he's been a big inspiration for me. Uh, obviously, uh, he got my, uh, it, because of him, I was able to, to get my life on the right track. And, and one of those moments happened, which, this is uh, 2016, so back in uh, 1976, little did I know two months from now that I would meet my wife. And with my wife, Jackie, we've got two, uh, two boys, two girls, four grandkids. The, uh, the girls had boys and the boys had girls. And it, it was all because, you know, of my dad, right? And I, I appreciate that, and that's really done, uh, done a lot for me in, in my life. And a lot of what, what he did for me was not so much talking, so much lecturing. It was just being, me being able to watch, me being able to follow in his footsteps. Him taking me, taking the time to take me to his games when he was when he was coaching in high school, to 
take me to the games when he officiated basketball and football, I just got, got a chance to hang out and got a chance to observe. And, and I'm not uh, ashamed at all to say that when people say that my mannerisms, you know, are just like his, I'm proud of that because that's, you know, I, I'm trying to be what, what he was, humble, appreciative, and, and just do the best that you can do for, for people. I also like to say congratulations to LaPel and to Liberty Christian. I, I think, you know, winning state championships, those, those are going to be long lasting memories. I know that you guys will be able to get together year after year after year to reminisce. One thing that I know for sure that 20, 25 years from now when you get together and start reminiscing, some of those stories are going to get really, uh, are going to probably change but they'll change for the better. So again, thanks to, uh, to Anderson, thanks to Mr. Warner for uh, putting this, uh, for Mr. Ochterman for pulling all this together and for Anderson to come out and, and show their appreciation for my dad. Thank you. So at this time, we have a family member. Ms. Mildred Powell will come before you and talk about the great Jumpin' Johnny Wilson. Well, I am John's niece, his sister's daughter, and uh, I've spent a lot of time with my Uncle John. In fact, before I ever met him, because I was raised in Kentucky by my father's family, I always heard about your Uncle John, your Uncle John, and I was in, just enthralled by that because at that point he was playing uh, with the Harlem Globetrotters and he was going all over the world. Uh, that is something that was just very impressive to me. So I'm happy to be here today and happy to thank the city of Anderson and all of you for helping to celebrate his life. He probably doesn't want me to say this, but he is well, he hadn't threatened me yet. Um, he is 89 years young. And we are happy to have him with us. He is a World War II, I'm one, post-war racism was rampant, and John was born during that period when life for African Americans was just not that great. But he learned how to use his talents, use what his mother and dad had given him. Uh, he didn't get a gun. He didn't start a fight. He didn't do any of the things that we're experiencing today in the news. You just go, why can't people just control themselves. Well, part of it is because parents haven't controlled themselves. We haven't taught our children that just keeping your mouth shut, just walking away is the best way. I'm looking at these two schools and these young men and saying to you, it ain't about who wins in a fight. At this day and age, it's who comes out alive. And that's the whole goal. We learned that early in our family. Hazel and Randolph Wilson, my Uncle John's mom and dad, raised a number of children. After his dad passed, his mom had to finish that job by herself. But she was the kind of lady in the community everybody respected. Because it didn't matter whether it was her child or your child or somebody else's child, straighten up and fly right. She did not believe in just sugarcoating things and she wasn't worried about whether other parents were 
upset, there was a way to act. There was a way to conduct yourself. And that's what she taught her children. He showed a lot of skills in track and basketball and all of those things are wonderful. But he learned to control himself, to control his behavior. All right. Even when people talked about him, said words I'm sure that he didn't want to hear, he learned how to just shake it off. And perhaps part of that came from the fact that our family came out of slavery, as a number of black families did. But his great-great-grandmother walked from North Carolina to Spiceland, Indiana, which could have been no small feat. And in 1880, I found them in the census of Spiceland, Indiana. There were 29 family members that had made it from North Carolina. Now, I don't know how they did it, but I knew it takes a lot of perseverance. There are people that won't walk around the corner. They said, no, I don't want to walk. I think I'll take my car. They didn't have one. So you know, you need to look at your history and look at the people that you respect in your families. They didn't just appear somewhere. It took a lot of guts, took a lot of fortitude to get where John, so he had help getting there, but once he was given the ball, the ball was in his court. But he showed today what it took to make it. He has the greatest personality in the world. Man. You know, when something happens, instead of getting upset, he'll laugh. Instead of getting angry, you know, he'll just sit and become calm. Now, I, on the other hand, did not, I did not adhere to that, John, I'm sorry. <laughs> because, you know, he came to a time when that was the way to handle things. We can go to court, we can do lots of things today, but in order to be the kind of person that we're honoring today, you have to be a really good person. Your heart has to be right. That's right. You have to be the kind of person that when Sunday morning comes, uh, you get up and go to church. Now, he didn't only learn that from his mother. He learned it from his great-grandmother. And Alan Chapel sees today the results of Hazel Rhodes Wilson and Mary Ellen Kaiser Rhodes, who went to that same church. So he knows how to find his way, how to do the things that God would have him do. And I thank God today for all that he is to this community and all that he is to our family. Thank you. Thank you, Mildred. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank God for being able to be here today. Um, and also want to thank God for the parents that I have. Um, thanking God for my dad, um, an awesome, awesome dad. Um, I always say I hear everybody talk about him, and I just say he's just my dad. Um, I love what he's done, but he's still, he's just my dad. And, and that's what I like love about it is that He's been a dad to me. He, he's been everything. Um, he's taken care of me when I was little and even now, always giving me encouraging words, helping me out along the way. Um, he's just an awesome, awesome man. I, as, I had friends that, you know, I would tell them about my dad. You know, he was a Harlem Globetrotter. And they would say, did you ever see your dad play? Like, I was in 46, I was born in 62, no, <laughs> I didn't see him play. Uh, I wish I could have, but I, I, I didn't get that opportunity to see him play. Um, but we all know that he's, he's a great guy. But I just kind of want to thank a lot of people 
um, that I've met along the way. Uh, Mr. Warner, thank you so much. You know, you've been awesome. Um, Skip and Dana, you guys have been awesome as well, helping out the community, um, doing lots of things. Skip, you know, keeps in contact with me, letting me know everything that's going on. He said, I'm going to put you on the board, but you don't even have to come to a meeting. I was like, great, thanks. Um, Greeks Pizza and um, Buffalo Wild Wings have done awesome things, had uh, different um, things going on uh, throughout the past few months to raise money for Special Olympics and for uh, the church. Uh, so we are saying thank you for that. Um, also just want to thank, you know, family for being here. Um, our brother traveling from Virginia again. Uh, less than a month and a half coming back to celebrate our dad. Um, so I just want to say thank you. Just want to thank everybody in the community for coming out. Um, loving to see Liberty and, and LaPel win that championship. Good job. Appreciate bringing it back to, to Madison County. Good job. Just want to thank everybody again for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Well, i tell you what. I sat there and um, thought about, with my eyes closed, I could see Johnny and me walking to Shadeland School when we were probably 10, 11, 12 years old. Um, the world was different in those days, and I think every generation, every decade, we see how the culture uh, makes a difference, changes. There's never been a change in America as great as when we started at least to a better degree, respecting everybody, understanding that the Lord made us, and he, put, he put us in different places, but we're all here in the same time in history. We're, we're made in the image that he wanted us to be. He put us where he wanted us to be. There must have been a plan for that. So be happy where you're at and what you're doing and where you're at. Life is tough. But Johnny and I, we bonded as kids, innocent kids. We didn't know what the word civil rights, what was that, Johnny? We didn't, we didn't know about that. Johnny could play sports, I could play sports. We walked to school together. We were not great students. We were both thrilled to death to get a C. Now, I've, I've used this so much, I hate to use it again, but I often like to say that Johnny and I did, in fact, carry a four point in high school. He was two and I was two. <laughs> that's, that's more truth than fiction. No, we, we were average kids. It's amazing how many great things happen to average people when their motives are right, when their spiritual life is strong, when respect for others is present, when there's a time in your life that you realize we're only here for a short time and we have an assignment. The assignment is to pass peace and love and understanding and forgiveness. That's, if, if you ever hear somebody say, I wonder why we're here, tell them that. That's the truth. That's God's word through us, and that's why we survive as a civilization with all the problems we face. Now, Johnny and I did not have a magic game plan, but let me tell you what happened in true history. When Johnny and I played together and we had a common goal, was to win a ball game. Johnny was a superstar, no question about it. In high school, the coach used to criticize me for not shooting enough. It was real hard to get the ball into Johnny in the center because they dropped back on him. They didn't want him to get the ball. So the coach says, put it up there. You make about half your shots, and when you don't make it, Johnny's all over it. So getting the ball into Johnny was to shoot it up to the bucket, and he outjumped everybody. But I think what's left here is Johnny and I both, I'll be 90 in about three months, and Johnny just turned 89. That's a long life. Amen. And how 
many people can say you've had a close, genuine friend for almost 80 years. And that's what John and I enjoy. Now, you can, you can speak of that in lots of ways, but the word genuine is right in the middle. There was nothing phony about how we uh, thought about each other, how we uh, respected each other, and our families. And I love the fact that this is a family gathering. In, in Hazelwood, where I grew up, in, in a mixed neighborhood, I knew lots of wonderful families. There were the Goldstons, and the Broadnacks, and the Clemens, and the Coxes, and the Wootens. There were more. These were all black families. Well, we were a white family. The Montgomerys lived down the street. Mr. Montgomery carried the mail twice a day. One of the finest gentlemen you'd ever want to meet. These were quality families, good people, hardworking people. And so, Johnny and I, we had our time together, played lots of winning games, had lots of fun. Now, everybody thought that we played Anderson High School sports to win a letter, to get the big A, to wear on a sweater. No, we didn't, that wasn't it. We got to eat at the post office cafe. The post office cafe was one of the best restaurants in Anderson. And they had steaks. I mean, John, John and I never saw a steak that big. Well, that, that was our bonding in those years. We played for a tough coach. He was a no-nonsense coach, Charlie Cummings. Uh, he didn't, uh, if John was a star, uh, didn't make any difference. If he, if he messed up, he got told about it. One time, Johnny and I went to see a cowboy movie at the State Theater. And we had to sit in the balcony because Johnny could not sit on the main floor. So we sat up in the balcony and we saw the movie and um, I think it cost a dime. But I think one of us got in, the other one slipped in <laughs> the side door. But the movie was over and I said, let's go, John. Well, he said, I, I want to see, uh, I want to see Hopalong Cassidy come riding in again on that horse. Well, let's, let's wait till that part and then we'll go. Well, the problem was we were supposed to have a practice, just a free throw practice, that Saturday afternoon. We were going to put a Fort Wayne Central that night, one of the best teams in the state. And so it was customary. We'd go to the gym in the afternoon, shoot free throws, get our uh, defensive assignments, and then come back ready to play. Well, Johnny and I missed a meeting in the afternoon. When we got there, it was Mr. Cummings. He, he wasn't happy. So he kind of, he, he, he gave us a pretty good dressing down. Now we had to play this team at night and Bobby Milton was their star. I had to guard him. We beat Fort Wayne Central soundly, boy. I mean, if we hadn't, <laughs> we'd probably lost our uniforms. Mildred, you were right on target when you said self-discipline was one of Johnny's strong trademarks. Now, Johnny and Jackie Robinson have a parallel story in my mind. I played nine seasons with Jackie Robinson, and I saw him go through all the indignities of segregation in those early years. Couldn't stay with us in the hotels, couldn't eat with us at certain restaurants, in, in which the team wouldn't go either. We couldn't do it. But Johnny was, in 1946, Mr. Basketball, and that's the year Jackie signed with Mr. Ricky to play professional baseball. And there was a parallel to, to their two careers. When I got to New York, met Jackie, played with him, he called me over one day to his locker. He says, hey, I want to thank you for what you did yesterday. I said, what was that? Well, I hadn't pitched yesterday. Well, what did I do? Well, you went outside on your way out and you stopped and talked with Rachel and little Jackie right in front of all those fans. I was almost embarrassed. <laughs> well, Jackie, come on. If I pitch a good ball game, you can, you can congress it. But not for that. That just was natural. Well, he said, how's come this black and white thing didn't bother you? Two words. Johnny Wilson. He was my buddy. What's this about black and white? Did you ever read the Bible? 
What color is the Bible? If it was all black, you couldn't read it. If it was all white, it's black and white. We're bound together. We're, we're in our time in history. We're here for the right reason, and that's to show the world. And if Johnny and I had any, any, any reflection on the world, that this is the right way to respect each other, then I'm forever grateful that the good Lord put me where I was at the time I was, and to be Johnny's good friend, and now to have his home community uh, hold him up, honor him. In doing so, he kind of drags me right along with him. And I get to be a part of a youngster who didn't have much of a chance. He beat all the odds, became a respected person, respected citizen, and now he has a monument out front at his high school, which I hope, if you've never heard a monument speak, or a sculpture speak the truth, that monument out front will do it. If the students will read about Johnny's life, the greatest thing Jackie Robinson did was to contain his own instincts to fight back. Johnny did the same thing. He was focused on the right things. He listened to the right people and he achieved beyond what anybody would have projected he could do. Johnny, I'm proud of you, buddy. But please, when I only have a 12-inch putt, would you say, Carl, that's good? <laughs> Just one time? God bless all of you for honoring Johnny Wilson. Thank you. So at this time, I'd like to bring up state championship head coach of Liberty Christian basketball team, Mr. Jason Chapel. All right, I'm a little short too, so uh, thanks so much for having us. And, um, you know, I'm a product of this community, and growing up here, uh, basketball, it, it, was, it was life. And um, we, we had a poster of our team made up, and on it, it said, standing on the shoulders of giants. And on it, we, we put some of Liberty's former players um, of what, you know, who had meant something to our basketball program. But to our city, um, you've got Johnny Wilson. Without him and the tone that he had set, there would not have been Anderson basketball the way it is, the way of, uh, Highland basketball, uh, Madison Heights, the wigwam. Because of the tone and the excitement that you set in our city, um, that's what created. And we really feel like um, Anderson is the capital of the high school basketball. And, uh, you know, um, growing up here, um, I, I went to uh, Anderson Community Schools and my parents uh, sent me to Liberty. And growing up, Liberty wasn't even a, a blip on the radar and uh, nobody knew about us. And, uh, you know, you had Anderson Highland and Madison Heights and we just wanted to be a part of our city. And I feel like now we are a part uh, of our community. And thank you for that. And thank you for all the support um, that you guys gave our team during our run. Um, the, the fire department, the police department, the mayor, the city council, um, and, and Rodney Chamberlain for what you've done today. Um, thank you for including us. Um, so, I digital age now, so I'm going to be using my phone a little bit, um, but I, I, you know, growing up, uh, <laughs> and I'm going to, I guess, date myself, but I, I'm okay with that. Um, I was, uh, I just, my, my dad just had moved our family back here. Uh, it, he went to law school in Oklahoma City. 
and we were from Anderson, and we moved back here, and my dad took me to a basketball game at the Wigwam, and because I went to Edgewood Elementary, I, I was, you know, an Anderson Indian fan, and, and I went to this game, and, and it was the Hall of Fame game, and it was Anderson and Highland, and I, I just became a fan of all the, the teams, Highland, Anderson, Madison Heights, and just became a huge fan of, of basketball in our community, and just the history that we have, uh, and it's just, it's incredible. Um, and so for these guys to be a part of it, they don't, they don't even know some of this stuff that went on. And uh, 70 years since it's happened, and they were able to, to bring it back. So I'm proud of these guys. Uh, they're great kids, um, and they face a lot of adversity through the season. Uh, they, they get the brunt of it from fans, angry fans, opponents, um, and just to kind of see um, uh, you know, the adversity they face. One story I'll tell you about, um, we're playing in Case Arena, which Case Arena is named after uh, Everett Case, uh, who is from Anderson. Case Arena is the, 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 where Frankfurt plays. That's where we play our regional. We're playing Lafayette Central Catholic. This is gonna tell you the type of kids these guys are. Uh, we're playing Lafayette Central Catholic. We blow a 15 point lead and um, we're down with 10 seconds left in the game by four points. We have board members that are leaving the gym. My own family's leaving the gym. It's over, it's not gonna happen. Uh, Franklin Nunn comes down, uh, hits a shot, gets fouled. We're down one. I think there's nine, seven seconds left. Uh, we foul. Uh, LCC, they uh, come down, hit their free throws, because uh, that's what they do, they're a great team, so we're down three. We get the ball, bring it down, uh, Franklin drains a shot uh, to send it into overtime. there. And, and then Ronnie does it again in overtime to win it. And um, you just knew after that game over, we knew we were going to win. And we did. These guys persevered, and um, these are the type of guys that aren't going to run from their marriages. They're not going to run from adversity. They're going to face it. I'm so proud. If, I, if there's ever been a, you know, being a coach is a difficult thing, but if there's ever been a superintendent that has your back and has your team's back, it's been Dr. Staley. So we want to thank her. And then a man who's been like a father to me, and to some of these guys, and, and it's probably been a principal to many of you out there. Uh, and he's gonna present uh, Johnny Wilson with a championship t-shirt. Uh, and he's also the grandfather of one of Lapel's players, Preston Scott, uh, Mr. Stacy Scott. For you, the Lapel High School boys basketball team head coach, Coach Jimmy Howe.
First of all, I want to thank you for allowing us to be part of this. Uh, being in the county, obviously, but uh, south of here, uh, it's really nice to be acknowledged by the uh, entire county and especially by uh, the people of Anderson. Uh, Liberty Christian was an outstanding team this past year. We had an opportunity to play them and I saw them play several times. Uh, what they did for this community and for their school is something that will be remembered forever. And as far as Johnny Wilson is concerned, um, in my opinion, it's about time they did something like this for you because what all you've given to the community right. as an athlete, right. what you did once you got out of high school with the Globetrotters, and now what you do coming back to the community and the role model that you have been for all these 80 some years, outstanding job. It's an honor to be here with you, sir. Now we have uh, several kids not here today, as you can see. Um, I'll talk about our three seniors first. They uh, are on vacation. One of them just had knee surgery, actually. He's not on vacation, but he's home recuperating from knee surgery at Friday. We had three seniors. Tristan Carpenter was a 6'4 center. Uh, great as far as drawing charges, rebounding. Plays as hard as anybody I've ever had. He is going to be playing his basketball at Indiana University Southeast down in New Albany. Brady Smith, who just had knee surgery, and we found out just a week or two ago that he partially tore his ACL after the regional celebrating the regional championship, but he played through the semi-state and state with it, which we and his doctor had no idea he had done. He will be playing at uh, IU East in Richmond. And our third senior, we only had three seniors this year, so we have some good kids coming back. Cameron Harrington, who will be playing at Trine University up in northern Indiana. So uh, we're going to miss them, obviously. We also have several kids that are either on vacation or we have three kids actually playing in tournaments right now. We have uh, John Ross Richardson and Luke Richardson that are playing in Orlando at the, uh, as I speak. And uh, Austin Lyons is on his way back from playing in a basketball tournament in Kansas City. So we have kids still out there trying to get better and, and trying to uh, give ourselves a chance to do something again next year. But we do have a few people here today that I would like to acknowledge. Uh, two assistant coaches, I think one of them skipped out already, Coach Buckner and uh, also Greg Allison. Greg Allison is the big guy s sitting here in the front. And we have five people here that uh, are from our basketball program. I'd like for them to come up. Andy Fowler. <laughs> Levi Frazier. Now, a story about Levi. Levi is a three-sport athlete, which I know Johnny likes and, and we like as well. But uh, he hurt his knee the third practice of this year. He was a sophomore this past year. Had surgery about two weeks later. Did not get to start practicing with us until sectional week. So he had to sit out all that time Never missed a practice unless he had to go to a doctor appointment. Was in there every day. You don't see that very often. He was able to practice and get his 10 days of practice with us. And his first time dressing was in the semi-state. And then he also got to dress in the state. But you talk about somebody that persevered, battled through a lot, and uh, stayed with it. Caleb Bloom. Chris Mottweiler. And Preston Scott. Preston, of course, is Stacy Scott's grandson, and Preston is from Haiti. And that is a uh, great story to have he or Stacy tell sometime about him getting to the States. Uh, 
tremendous story. And if we look back on what it has happened here over the years, several state championships, several great coaches, a lot of professional athletes coming out of this area. It's been a hotbed, especially for basketball. But none have been greater than Johnny Wilson. And to give you an idea a little bit about Johnny Wilson and the type of athlete he is, I happen to have played in a golf tournament this past Monday, uh, Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame golf tournament over in Westfield. Johnny Wilson was one, on one of the other teams. They didn't give out a lot of prizes. They didn't give out a prize to the oldest person there, which I'm sure Johnny was. They didn't give one away to the best athlete there, which I'm sure Johnny was. But they did give awards out for the longest drive on a hole. And they did give awards out for a closest to the pin on one of the par threes. Johnny Wilson, out of those 120 or 30 players at age 89, received closest to the pin on one of the par threes. That's unbelievable. Thank you again for including us. We appreciate uh, everything that uh, the county has done for us and the city of Anderson. Thank you. It uh, makes me feel very good to uh, think after, well, what is it, uh, 70 years since uh, we won the state tournament in basketball, and I got a little publicity then, and still people come out to, uh, to see me today, which I really appreciate it. And I appreciate uh, Mr. Warner God, and you. Skip. Where's Skip? Back over there, Hector Wall. And Skip uh, Ackerman. They've been on me for uh, several months now working on this uh, program. And the, uh, there's uh, some of the members of my church that are here from Allen Chapel AME. Right. Mostly, the ladies are here. I saw one uh, one man, uh, I don't know where he slipped off to, um, Jesse Kyer. Jesse is uh, probably my closest friend in the church. We, we get along together and have a lot of fun, but uh, see Mother Pearl back here. She's uh, the mother of the church, tremendous lady. Then uh, you see some of the ladies back there and some uh, Wine Colored Church. They are the ones that work in the uh, the clothing giveaway that we have down there every Thursday morning from uh, from Thursday from 10 until 2. And uh, the thing about it is that uh, I'm the only man that's working down there with about uh, six ladies and uh, having a lot of fun, enjoy it. But you know what? They work me so hard. Come on, ladies, don't, don't look like that. But uh, as I said, uh, most of my free time now, I'm not playing golf, I'm working with uh, my church, in which uh, it's the same church as uh, Mildred mentioned, the same church that my mother and my grandmother went to. I didn't uh, join that church until uh, later, but uh, I have uh, really enjoyed being there now. And I really appreciate uh, the uh, fact that the young men from LaPel and from Liberty Christian are here. Because I can remember, <laughs> remember back in uh, 1946 when we were fortunate enough to win the state championship. Although we should have won it uh, when uh, Sir, is Carl? Yeah, Carl's still there. When Carl was playing my sophomore year, Carl was a junior. We should have won it that year. We had a far better team that year than in 46. But we lost in the afternoon to state. I got hurt the week before and couldn't run. But uh, Carl didn't shoot enough that night, that day. <laughs> but uh, as I said, I've, uh, I really enjoy seeing all of you here. It's, uh, it's really a, an honor to. Uh, for people to look back all the years that have gone. And I, I would say, just looking around, there's not over five people probably in this
building that they ever saw me play a basketball game. I said, there's one uh, gentleman came up and uh, we played against each other. And now, you know, and, and let me tell you something about LaPel. LaPel was my biggest enemy <laughs> during high school. But uh, one thing that changed my feeling with LaPel was when I went to college, at Anderson College, the coach came to me and asked me, he says, uh, we need a point guard. I said, the best point guard in the state of Indiana is in LaPel. His name is Jim Woodward. And so the coach and the system went down to talk to Jim and asked about coming to Anderson. And he said, oh, no way. He says, I come to Anderson and Wilson and kill me. <laughs> so uh, finally, the next day I went down and I talked to Jim, and he came to Anderson. And half the points that I scored in college came on passes from Jim Woodward. He was a tremendous, tremendous basketball player. And then my whole feeling about LaPel changed. And then uh, there's two people, Jack and Jackie. They're Coach Howell's mom and dad, and we have become extremely close. Uh, Jack went to Anderson College, and uh, now I go usually go down for at least one game down in LaPel, and I cannot go to the game without stopping over and spending some time with them. So I, I'm a LaPel fan now also. Uh, Liberty Christian, I was out there, for, I saw part of a reserve game because a young lady asked me to come out and uh, she was being honored with uh, other athletes and, uh, and I came out and saw half the game, but I had to get back to the way, the TP to watch the Indians play. Of course, you all won your game, the Indians lost there. But uh, I uh, really appreciate you young men coming out and uh, the thing about it is in basketball and other sports, now I'm a great believer in uh, at least three sports in school. And I've been very fortunate that the Herald Bulletin has a three sport uh, award that they give out each year for the uh, th three sport athletes in the county. And they put my name on it, which I'm very blessed to have something like that. But uh, you young people, you know, it only takes hard work to become a champion. Now, I was at the luncheon that they have for the, uh, for the state tournament, the Saturday before the state tournament, and uh, I was down there, and uh, the LaPel team, the Liberty Christian team was there, and someone came over and said, uh, they'd like me to take a picture with the two teams since they were from Anderson and Madison County. And I went over and I uh, told both teams I wanted them to win. And I told the one the Liberty Christian, I said, you know, I said, it's been 70 years since Anderson's ever had a championship in basketball. And you know, they won it, as you know. And the thing about it is that uh, I'm probably the only person that has taken a, cham a picture with a championship team on three different teams <laughs> in a period of 70 years in between all of them. But as I said, I really uh, enjoyed watching you young men play, and, and I said just keep working at it. Work hard, practice hard. And if you practice hard, and the other thing is be like Erskine. No, don't be like Erskine or not. Be good students in school. And Carl said we both had a two point a four point average, two points each. But it wasn't like he didn't tell the truth about that. One had a 2.2, the other had a 1.8. <laughs> Carl didn't have a 1.8. <laughs> I did. But uh, and the friendships that you can make in athletics, as it goes to show with uh, Carl and I. We go back, I said, uh, back to Shadeland, grade school. You know, the thing about it, you, you saw Carl standing up here. Oh, 
about the one about that high. You know, Carl was the center on our undefeated city championship grade school team at Chamberlain. He was our center because he was about three or four inches taller than me. What happened, Carl? <laughs> but, and we, uh, Carl and I played baseball together. Uh, well, let's go back a little bit. We, we, there was two separate, uh, in Anderson at that time, they had uh, black league and white league in Junior Park League baseball. And uh, Carl and I uh, played in different leagues. So one day we decided that we are going to do something about it. And so I jumped my league and went over and played with Carl's team. We won the game 22 to nothing. The next day, Carl and them had to forfeit the only game they lost all year. And, uh, but then we did play Junior Legion baseball together after that. And I, I'm not bragging, but I'm going to say this one. I was the best first baseman in baseball. Come on, John. Two years I played with Carl. I was the best first baseman in baseball. You had guys in the big leagues like Gil Hodges from Indiana playing for the Dodgers. Couldn't touch me. I played two years and did not make a single error. What, John? Carl struck everybody out. <laughs> so. So he, wasn't, he didn't treat me right, because I wanted to use my glove, you know, but uh, I could have went out there and sit down on first base and played the whole game. But I have really enjoyed my uh, relationship with Carl, and said that it uh, goes back, way back in the uh, middle 30s, when him and I were together. But uh, for you young people, uh, work hard. Now, uh, you don't have to be the best student in the school, but you have to give the best effort. Work hard at it. The, and there's one other thing that I'm going to say about myself, is that uh, you need to take care of your, your body. All right. As I said, uh, I'm 89 years old. I've yet to smoke my first cigarette or take my first drink of any type of alcohol. So that, that is the one thing that uh, I feel true. I had success in basketball, but the thing that I feel better about than anything else was that, that I did not follow some of the other people. When I went to the service and then when I went out to play uh, professional baseball and basketball, and everybody said, you'll come back like the rest of us. You'll be smoking and drinking. No, that's just not in my life. And that's what you young people should think about. Think about your body. Think about what it means to you. And said, no. I said, I'm 89 years old. And you take it 10 years from now, when I come back out here, you guys, will be, some of you will be coaches, but I'm going to be here in 10 years. Because I've had a lot of success in uh, sports, but I've always said the one thing that I feel that I have been the most blessed individual in the world. The good Lord has taken care of me and kept me going. And then, especially when I have three children like that, one son, two daughters. I have uh, a lot of cousins. I have uh, nieces, nephews. I have uh, granddaughters, grandsons, great-granddaughters, great-grandsons. And uh, I expect to see uh, another generation before I leave here. So uh, that means I've got to go at least another uh, 10 to 15 years. But. Uh, you guys, some of you guys, you'll come, uh, as I said, some of you'll be coaches or teachers or whatever, but come out and watch me talk in 15 years. Okay, now, I want to thank all of you for coming. Thank you.